Morning, my name is Taylor, this is Beep Dep. In this Samsung Gallery Photo Editing Deep Dive, I know it's long, so I put time code links in the description so you can skip to whichever part that you're mo more interested in, so you don't have to skip through. Also, in the upper uh, left-hand corner, there's the titles, and they stay there for as long as I talk about that particular subject. So if you are just skimming through, you know exactly what I'm talking about without having to actually stop in here. Let's get right to it. This picture was taken with 108 megapixel mode turned on, but this feature I'm showing you here is available on non-108 megapixel versions too. By zooming into the picture, you'll see an icon up at the top left corner. Pressing that will take a picture of the picture currently on screen exactly as it appears on the display. It's nice being able to do this because it keeps you from having to press the screenshot combination buttons, then catch the edit option when that pop-up slides out from the left, then crop it, and then save it. The more detailed the picture is that you're doing this with, the more useful the picture. The open eye button in the top right group of options will simply apply Bixby vision to your photo. Bixby then identifies the most likely point of interest in the photo and then does a similar image search with it, sourcing the pictures from Pinterest. There's really no practical application for this here just because it's a bunch of other dudes who also have facial hair and who also are wearing hats. However, this example does give good insight on how the similar images finder works. And if that helps you out in the future, wonderful. Pretty self-explanatory, marking this picture as your favorite using the heart button down on the bottom far left will include this in the favorites and allow you to quickly access it using the large preset buttons at the top of your gallery app when either in the photos or albums views. Useful because it makes the photos a little quicker to access even than having them in separate albums. The rotate button up in the top right group of options is for when your rotation lock is on and you don't want to have to swipe down from the top of the screen two or three times just to turn it off so the photo can rotate real quick while you show someone a picture or video that looks best when viewed in landscape mode. Pretty nice that they included that. Up in the top far right, there's the three dots menu. In the first option, there is details. There's a quicker way you can access this, and that's by just swiping up on the picture. It gives you a quick summary of the media's details that you can expand for more details by swiping up again. This is way smoother than the way they used to do it. It was slow and felt like it took far too much time for the amount of information it showed you after it finally swiped up the whole picture up out of view. You'll find the image type, the dimensions, the size, where it is on your phone, when it was taken, and if you have it enabled, a map view of where it was taken, along with any other photos you took in that location. You'll also find the camera's model that took the picture, even if it wasn't taken with your phone, but say, with your dedicated camera, as well as the camera's settings when taking it, the ISO, aperture, white balance settings, shutter speed, flash or no flash, even the millimeter or millimeter equivalent of the lens. I've always been impressed by having this access to this much info on a single photo without having to add any of it myself. Speaking of adding it yourself, the phone does its best to put auto tags where it can. For example, in this photo it added the hats, people, and portraits tags. But if you press edit up in the upper right corner, you can add your own tags, which are searchable in gallery search function. This is nice because for some reason, the search function doesn't catch image titles. A couple tags you've used before will show up in there so you don't have to type all of them again too. Highly underrated this whole options menu thing. Oh, and you can rename it too. Names of pictures are searchable in the phone's file browser too, by the way. A feature that's kind of gone by the wayside is Live Message, first found in the Note series but still available here. You can draw with multiple pen types to spice up a picture and turn it into a GIF that shows you the lines being drawn, including the effects on each of the pens. When you're done, just press Done, and as a Live Message is saved, you'll see its animation, which I thought was a nice feature. Then you'll be told that the Live Message was saved in your gallery, and the Done button will turn into the Share button, and I think it's safe to assume you know what to do from there. The other four options in this menu are set as wallpaper, set as always on display image, move to secure folder, and print. And because they all pretty much explain themselves, I'm going to skip them. If you really want to see those detailed like this other stuff, just comment and if enough people want to see it, I'll do those too. The pencil button down at the bottom is next, and it contains most of Gallery's built-in editing tools. Pressing this, you'll see the handy dandy 3x3 grid with handles on each corner so you can drag to crop the image as you wish. And as you do so, when the crop shape hits a standard ratio size like 16x9 or Instagram's 1x1, the borders will turn yellow and it'll snap to that position. Pretty nice to have, but you can also press that button in the middle of the row of 5 just below the picture and find options to auto crop the picture to any of the preset dimensions. I like doing it this way because then I can reposition the picture without fiddling with catching that snapping point by doing it freehanded. To the left of the ratio button is the mirror button. Pressing this will flip-flop the photo on its y-axis, I think is the correct term. Anyway, it'll give you a mirrored version of your picture, useful if the option to auto-flip the selfie isn't turned on in your camera settings, for example. Then on the far left of that same row of buttons is the rotate button, and again, it, it pretty much explains itself. 
Right from center button in that same row allows you to tilt the photo up and down or left to right, as if you were tilting a three-dimensional framed photo. I think this might be nice if there was some lens distortion, especially if you downloaded the picture you're editing from an external source and it looks wonky, but I doubt there will be many situations where you'll need this photo repair focused function unless you just want to skew something for fun. On the bottom row of buttons, you'll see the three circles looking one. I'm assuming this is one of the better known tools in the built-in editing stuff in this app, but I'll skim through it anyway. These are your filters, and the slider that's just below them controls how intensely that filter is applied. If you scroll all the way to the end of the list, you'll see a button that will take you where you can download more. Pretty much explains itself. But can someone please tell me what those itty bitty icons are on some of these? Like, is that the app they were originally sourced from or made for? I'd love some insight in the form of comments. Oh, and something I forgot to mention, the magic wand button in the upper left hand corner of the screen, if you press that, it will autom it will apply any adjustments that it thinks the picture needs automatically. So if you don't want to go through this entire process that you see me doing here, you can just hit that button and the phone will do its best to optimize it as it sees fit. Also the auto filter, the first one there, does pretty much the same thing. Just kind of, in this case, it darkens it a little bit, increases the contrast, saturation, yada yada. To the right of the filters button is a circular, sort of shaded looking button. This is your brightness, exposure, contrast, saturation, hue, and white balance adjustments. There's really not a wrong way to do this if you're just making it look like you want to, but a tip that I didn't know for a while is if you make your if your picture is dark or you want more detail in the darker areas of the photo or video, turn the contrast down. You might already have known that for forever, but learning that was of great value to me, so I figured I'd share. Not sure why the hue option is there, except to, like I said before, fix a photo that you downloaded from an external source that's got some color issues. Or you may just want to be funky with the colors, and in that case, slide away. The white balance option at the end brings up another sub-menu for different presets based on different kinds of lighting. I hardly ever need to touch any of these because the phone already does a pimpin' job of auto white balancing, but it can be useful if you shoot a photo in the pro mode in the phone's camera or are editing a picture you didn't take. Here's a quick look at what all of them look like, but if I had to pick the most useful option here, it would be the one at the end where you can pick the Kelvin lighting temperature. I've taken photos with this phone's night mode and in a lot of cases, because the shutter is open for longer periods of time, photos tend to come out more yellowy because the light source becomes more saturated than it normally would. So being able to cool down the skin tones in particular is a really nice way to quickly and easily level out a picture that came out a little too warm or cold. This one I haven't seen before either, and it's basically a pen that will give you a selection of shapes and doodles that is based on the basic shape that it thinks you drew, in this case a circle. It shows a set of circly shapes you can use. I can't think of any use case for this, but if you can, comment it. The square smiley face with the folded corner button is where your stickers live, and they range from the set made from the AR version of you, if you took the time to make one, I personally don't use these much, but if those appeal to you, here they are, to speech and thought bubbles. There are various kinds as of arrows as well, useful for just slapping on the picture real quick to point out a particular line of text or the part of the picture that you want to pay attention to. I'll grab this one and put it here for the sake of demonstration and move along. Next are what's called decorations, and there's a multitude of things like hearts, sparklies, lightning bolts, that kind of thing. The expressions caught my eye, and comment if you've seen these in earlier models, but they feel new to me. You can overlay them on faces and make some fun little masks with them, and it's a fun way to censor a person that's in the photo that you or they don't want to be in the photo. Or it can just be for some silly effects. They call this one calligraphy, and I'm not sure where they get that term for it, but they're basically little expressions, exclamations, etc. Then there's shapes like these, arrows that are a little more decorative than the other sections, among other things. The serving settings button is where you can go to enable or disable the stickers you have and then reorder them so the ones you use the most are the easiest to get to. This is one of my favorites. This pen lets you either pixelate or blur out any specific part of the image you want. You've got the usual few size options there and to blur it out just draw it in. Maybe someone's face you want censored, someone's anatomy that you want censored, a license plate, a part of a document you want to keep private when there's other information there that you want to stay visible. There are several different pattern styles for it on the row down there, as well as an option just to blur it instead of pixelate it if you want something more subtle. Then there's the text adder. You can start typing once you hit this button as it will already have added the text space to the picture for you and then tapping on that middle button will change the font type of whatever you've already typed. When you find the one that you like, you can proceed or you can hit that button to the right and give it a background. This is useful if the picture has a lot of white in it or dark, something that makes the text hard to see. This helps to stand out regardless of what's behind it. It has fully on where you can't see anything behind it, and if you tap again it'll go halfway transparent if you want something more subtle, and tapping it again will turn it back off completely. 
Just like with the text, you can tap the row of colors below these three buttons to change the color of the text box if it's selected, an added way of making sure the text is easily visible. The alignment button to the left of the front of the font changer, excuse me, will toggle it between centered, left aligned, and right aligned. I'm sure any of us that have had to write an essay or a paper are familiar with that function. Tapping that color spectrum button will bring up a lot more color options. You can also swipe on that row of colors to get to the two other sets. Some pastels are in there and more of the basic colors too. The dropper button on the left side of those colors lets you sample the exact color of your choosing from the picture itself, and the indicator up at the top left will show you the color you tapped on as you tap around the photo. I decided to use the dark green under the bill of my hat. Most of the built-in options in gallery have been there for a few generations of phones, but one thing I've either not looked for hard enough or that actually hasn't ever been there until now is the spot fixer. This tool amazed me when I discovered it, not just because it's cool, but it does the same thing that the healing tool or clone brush does in Photoshop. There's the brush size adjuster there. There isn't a whole lot of, of leeway that they give you here, but I guess it's better than only having one size to work with. I never expected to see this built into a phone's photo app. With this, you can eliminate freckles, get rid of wrinkles, specks of stuff on your shirt or hat, and in some cases even get rid of five o'clock shadow or facial hair growing where you don't want it. How this works is that whatever you tap or drag or scrub in, the tool takes pixels from the area surrounding where you touched and fills in the area you touched with those pixels, or at least evenly copies those pixels and auto blends them, I'm not sure. So you are, in effect, digitally skin grafting your freckles away, for example. Even if you're not one to artificially remove wrinkles or freckles, I've met many people who don't like that level of picture optimization. If you've got a cat hair on your shirt, or a lot of cat hairs in my case, that you want to get rid of, or maybe your beard dandruff was being particularly obnoxious that day, or you have wrinkles that you wouldn't normally have because you got crap for sleep the night before, this tool can come in great handy, especially as an alternative to the smoothing tool that just applies an auto-smoothing effect on your whole face without you being able to fine-tune where it's applied. In the same three dots menu is the style option, and those are more advanced filters, if you can even call them that, more like artistic effects. You can choose the intensity of these effects with the usual slider down there, and weirdly you can zoom in with this feature, but not with spot color. A nifty extra to this is the foreground background button to the right of the slider. This works whether the photo was taken in live focus mode or not. I'm assuming so because this picture wasn't taken with live focus, and it still works. Tapping it once will apply the effect only to the background, effectively giving you way more options for background exclusive effects than you'll find and just the live focus effects, I see a lot of creative potential here. Tapping it again will apply the effect to everything, and tapping a third time will apply it only to the subject. I find this less applicable, but then again, I'm way less photographically creative as I am video. So for those of you who are shutterbugs, now you know that this is here. The pencil icon to the right of that button will allow you to apply the effect to whatever part of the picture the filter isn't applied to. Like in this case, since it's background only, I can color that effect into the foreground as I choose. Not sure how useful this is, but it's a nice option in case, for example, the camera finds more than one face in the picture and you only want a specific one to not have the selected effect applied to. Funny enough, I had no idea how freaking cool that effect could be. Like Chris and I just stepped outside, I was like, hey dude, can you come and like do this for me? That is so badass. A feature that's been present for quite a few generations of Samsung phones is something called spot color in the three dots menu in the upper right corner. Tapping it will turn the whole picture black and white, and wherever you tap will show a magnified circular view of where you're tapping with a tiny crosshair in the middle for precision color selecting. Whatever color is selected with your tap, all the colors in the picture that match will come back. Like in the case of this photo, the bricks of my house happen to be roughly the same color as my skin, honestly making this picture a bad example for that particular feature. <laughs> as you tap around on the colors, all the places in the picture matching those taps will show. The default tool is the add color to the left there, and if you hit the subtract color in the middle, it will remove all colors matching the one that you tapped. Keep in mind, this tool doesn't become available until you've brought back at least one color with the add color tool, since the picture starts off with no color to take away anyway. The eraser tool takes away color that got added where you didn't want it, like those bricks behind me. While you can adjust the size of the eraser, I really think they need to add two things. One, the ability to see the size of the eraser as you adjust it, like you can with the spot fixer. And two, the ability to zoom into the photo to be more precise about where you erase, because as you can see here, I can't accurately erase the brick around my ear without it looking like garbage. Also up in that three dots menu is the advanced option where you can take even more control over mostly the picture's color among a couple other things. This first tool is called Tone Curve and with that top part you can control the shadows, darks, lights, and highlights. I could never use the curve graph with much precision and I think that sliders are the best solution for these kinds of adjustments on a phone anyway. But for those of you who like it and can use it better than I can, it's there for you. 
The left ends of these lines are the darks and the right ends are the lights. Again, please correct me if I'm wrong, and both are adjustable as well as the curve in the center, subduing the greens to make the blues and reds prevalent, for example. With this green line here, you can see how when I torque it all the way down to the floor, it nearly eliminates all but the brightest and barely green greens as another demonstration. Thankfully, those four buttons below the curve graph are just a different representation of the same thing the graph controls. At least it appears that way. But with, in my opinion, a user interface much better suited for the screen of a mobile device. However, I will say that the RGB or red, green, and blue curve graphs are the only way to control those colors in the particular way that they do. But the color wheel, that's where the advanced tools really shine. You have the seven primary rainbow colors that you can choose from, or the most powerful tool in the advanced editor, in my opinion, the dropper tool. With this, you can select the exact color that you want to adjust from the picture. Say if you wanted to change a logo color in the photo, or make the grass in that specific picture really pop, or do the sky the same way, or make a sunset picture even more beautiful by bringing out specific purples, pinks, and oranges from the sunset itself. There's so much you can do with this, it's insane, and I love it. To further demonstrate how significant this is, if you saw the whole tutorial, you will have seen this clip after I talked about the style tool, and the way I did that in Adobe Premiere is the same thing that you can do in the gallery built-in advanced color editor. The concept is exactly the same. You pick the dropper, same thing here. You select a color, do the same thing here. You adjust the hue, same idea here. And voila, pink fauna and flora. And you can do this on your phone. Dude, strangely, I didn't have the hue range, I guess you could call it, to get this grass to pink like in Premiere, but still, you don't pay extra for this capability in these phones. This is still a really powerful and useful tool, even if it's not like to the level that Adobe Premiere is, but we're talking about the difference between phone and PC. Last but not least, there's an image scaler included in that menu up there too, called Resize Image. This is not the same thing as cropping though. It has to do with how many pixels are in the image itself, and it gives you the option to reduce it to 20, 40, 60, and 80% of its original size, and gives you the actual pixel, dimen pixel dimensions in parentheses on the side there. This is nice if you need to make the picture smaller to fit in an email, or just make it easier in general to move around by being less for your phone or machine to handle. Hope that was informative. I have plans to like segment these out into smaller, uh, smaller independent videos later if I need to, just in case there's like a week where I have nothing to talk about. But thank you for watching and stay beamed.